Hey everybody, welcome to Fit Tip Tuesday. Today I want to talk about something that I experienced in my Zoom class that I taught for Fabric Mart over the past two weekends. I was teaching my whole scoop multi-method pants fitting where we start out with the basic framework of top down center out to balance the front and back leg and I experienced a, with a few of the students something that's going to be very time saving. So this video is for anybody who has a tilted waist, meaning when you look in your look in the mirror from the side view, you can see here that's what I'm talking about. So in this little illustration I drew, you can see that the front waistline dips down and the back waistline is higher. Now, I've you've probably heard me say many times in the past few months that I'm not really so concerned with measuring the crotch length. And that's still true, but we do have to be crotch aware. Now, if you have a tilted waist and you're preparing your front and back pattern pieces to use the basic framework of top down center out, then you know that you add above the waist because you need to balance it. So at center front and center back, adding to the pattern vertically will allow you to raise it or lower it to where it needs to be. And this is true even if you have a tilted waist. However, what I realized was if you have a tilted waist that results in a much shorter front rise compared to the back rise. So it may be worth just doing a quick measurement of your front crotch and comparing it to the rise on the front of the pattern, you know, the front um, center front rise of the pattern. This does not need to be an exact measurement, but it will tell you if you need to add to the center front of the pattern. And here's why this is important. If you just add four inches across the top of the front and back leg, sew your muslin together, and then you start working with it, if you have a shorter rise in the front because of a tilted waist, or I guess this could be for anyone who also has a petite rise, you know, you might want to check it because if you end up having lots of extra inches of fabric at the front of your muslin, it really makes it harder to precisely fit that and really see what you're doing. So I just want to show you here, I have a, a copy or a mini set of legs here and you can see I've already added the um, extra seam allowance along your side seam. What I want to talk about today is adding to the top of the pattern and I'm just going to draw what I would typically do here. So um, I'm going to use eighth inch um, marks to illustrate inch marks. So a half an inch is going to give me what I would consider four inches on a full size pattern. And I'm just going to draw that in like this. Okay, and I'm going to draw it in over here as well. Okay, so this is a common um, thing to do when you're preparing your pattern. And I'm just going to connect my center front and my center back. Um, also, I'm going to fill in the little wedge at the waist because you want to straighten the seam out from the full hip to the waist. So you end up with something that looks like this. Okay, so we're filling in this little area right here. We're filling in this little area right here. And that's fine. You can still do that. But notice now, if I've added four inches to the top of the waist and then you can pair your measurement and your actual waistline doesn't even make it to the top of the original pattern, you're going to have a lot of extra fabric to negotiate while you're trying to fit your muslin. So what I recommend doing is just taking a quick measurement of the pattern. And again, this doesn't have to be a fancy measurement. I'm just going to draw a line here. So if you essentially, um, measure from just the top of the waist right here to where the crotch curve or where the crotch level is 
this will give you a good idea. If this number is significantly bigger or longer than your front rise, then I would say, you know, maybe don't add as much or don't add any at all. You want to make sure you have some wiggle room. So if the pattern measures, um, you know, two inches longer than your front crotch measurement, maybe just add an inch or two inches. And that way you're going to minimize the amount of extra above your waist. So I just want to show how to do that. So basically what I'm going to do here is... I'm just going to say, all right, so I'm going to add two inches here, and I'm going to do it in a different color so you can kind of see what's happening here. I'm going to use red. So I'm going to go straight across at two inches. Now, at the side seam, I'm going to go to two and a half, and then I'm going to also do the same thing to the back so that agrees, and then I can connect this. And then in the back, I can add the full four inch amount so I have room to adjust my center back. So I'm just going to connect that like this. So see, what you're going to end up with is extra, but not so much extra. So this may seem like a really, you know, common sense, easy thing to do, but what I'm finding is as people are really trying to learn how to prepare their pattern and they're trying to do each step and they're trying to make everything, you know, perfect, because that's what we do as sewers. When we're learning something new, we, we try to pay attention to every little detail. So I just wanted to point out here that, um, you know, your shape does matter. And while it's true that you can use a single leg muslin and a separate waistband and fit your um, pattern to your shape regardless of what your shape is, there are some little time-saving things that you can do, like paying attention to your shape in terms of the front rise, you know, especially if you, you know you have a tilted waist. And that way you're saving fabric and you'll have much less to negotiate when you go to start your fitting. So I just want to point out here as well, working with the top down center out method, you're going to fit your waistband onto your body before you even start with the legs. So this could give you a very good reference for what's happening with your crotch length. So if you put your waistband or your non-stretch waistband on your around your waist where you like to wear your pants, it gives you a really good visual of you know how much real estate you're going to need going from the waist down through um on your front crotch and your back crotch. So Take a minute, put your non-stretch fitting waistband on, make sure you put it where you want your pants to, or where you want your waistband of your pants to um, sit, and then maybe take some quick measurements from the waistband down, and you can see if you even need to add anything to your center front, because that will make things so much easier for you when you start fitting. So this is just a quick Fit Tip Tuesday today. It was something that was really um, a common theme in my class over the past two weeks. So I wanted to just share that with you. So next week on Fit Tip Tuesday, I'm going to be reviewing some products from the Taylor Seville company, their magic pins and their magic clips. Two things I'm getting very excited about. So one thing I will say about the pins is sometimes longer is not better. So check that out next week. Um, also, if you have any questions or comments about preparing your pattern for a tilted waist or a short rise, please post those below and I will help you. On Friday, we're going to finish up the Sorsha Classic Slim Trouser Sew Along. I'm going to be putting together the waistband and the legs and just sewing up the rest of the pants so you can see how to do that. If you are working on your Sorsha Classic Slim Trousers and you need help, you can either post your questions below or you can email me. 
Um, my email is jsterndesigns37 at gmail. I have been getting some um, emails from people and I am so pleased and excited about how their fitting is going and I'm really excited because I think we're on the verge of seeing finished pairs of these pants and I have two that I will be sharing with you on Friday as well as a new pair that I have cut out and ready to go to finish the sew along. So um, join me for that one o'clock Eastern Standard Time live and we'll be sewing pants. Thank you guys so much. Have a wonderful rest of your day and I will see you again soon.